Hey everybody, I want you guys to know that a few days ago, my daughter told me, like, Mom, I got a lot of trips coming up, training, out of town weddings, we're going to Hawaii in June. I will help you. David and I and the kids will help you if you'll take back over your guard. Kind of knew it was going to happen because it was a couple of weeks she'd been leading up to this. I just wish she had told me sooner because she said she would buy transplants. And you all know me. I love to start everything by seeds. But life happens. And what am I going to do? Say no? No, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm jumping in and I'm going to get this garden going. I started a few days ago. I'll show you video clips of that, what I planted from seed. I went and I purchased some uh, starch. I tried to get the most reasonable ones that I could find. And I'm gonna put them in the ground. Some of them I'm gonna put in a makeshift greenhouse. Bria, can you get down here and show them this tote? That's what I'm gonna be putting some in to acclimate them to the environment. It's a beautiful day. It was 80 degrees here in North Texas and uh, it's about 77 right now, it's overcast, so it's a perfect day to get some of these plants in the ground that were in full sun, and the ones that weren't, I'm gonna put them in the greenhouse. Okay, let's get started. You wanna say hello, Brian? Yes, hello. Brian is acting shy today, and I just wanna share with you what we are planting in these containers. The soil is good, so we're putting golden beets, golden boy beets, and some more golden beets. And we'll put the markers on later. This video will serve as a marker, and then we will uh, label them later. Okay, Brian, you want to pat this one down and show them what I put in here? Put it with your palm in your hand, Brian, flat. Don't press too hard. We have marketplace. Uh, turnips, those are the ones that taste like potatoes to me. I love them. And we also have over here some parsnip. Okay, so just pat it down lightly and then I'm going to water it because I don't want you all to drown it. Okay, and over here we planted patty pan squash, the golden one over here, and then I put the green patty pan squash. Both of them are heirloom seeds. I'm just sharing with you that you can get the patty pan squash in the yellow, the scallop, and then the green. But they look identical and they taste the same. So that's what we got going on in this container. We sprinkled some Minnesota Midget Cantaloupe in this container. And we also sprinkled blue Lakes 274 bush beans in this one. This is a temporary home of my marigolds. I got a lot of French marigolds seeds in these two stackable towers, I guess is what you call them. They're gonna be planted all around the garden. And then I wanna show you that the mustard greens are showing out now, They're coming in a little bit more. And I will be able to uh, thin them out and put them in areas like right here that a lot haven't come up yet. And over here, I'm seeing the remnants of the Celebration Swiss Yard. It's starting to, let me go closer. It's starting to come up now. And the reason why I planted a lot of Swiss Yard is because it's my daughter's new favorite. Uh, she didn't eat it prior to me growing it. And here is the Ford Hook Swiss Yard, and it's coming up really really nice so i'm going to come back on monday and show you what i do uh, tomorrow about nine days ago i made a short video sharing with you guys how i keep down fungus nets and other bad insects out of my bedroom house plant and hydroponic jungle well these are the five plants and in that video, I shared with you how I isolate them. I apply this systemic houseplant insect control that protects the plants from damage from aphids, scales, white flies, and a lot of other insects, including the fungus gnats. Well, it's been nine days, so I decided today is the day that I'm going to up pot these plants. I haven't seen any gnats or any other 
insects around. So I'm going to transplant them, which I already did, into these transparent pots. They originally were in a three inch, uh, between three and four inches. They say four inches when you buy them, but it, it looks very similar to the size of the three inch pot. And so I transplant them, as you can see this one here. And I did all of these as well. And I wanna share with you that I water them from the bottom. You see how I put it down in this bowl and I wait until the surface is damp. That lets me know that the plant is thoroughly watered. Now these plants can be watered once a week. However, because I'm just transplanting them, I won't water these for about between two and three weeks. And then I'm also thinking about putting them in a mini uh, greenhouse because most of them, let me show you, this plant right here, which is a Fritona Ruby Red. This one, it is recommended that you can put in the terrarium. Okay, so it can get more moisture. This one as well, and it is called a gold dust croton and of course this is a Diefenbachia it likes moisture as well and this one I can't remember the name of it I'll insert it later I'm sure I have the tag over there where I have my potting soil and I use indoor potting mix that I have treated with this and I also add a little extra pearl light to it for drainage so I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how I'm going to set up the little greenhouse that I'm going to put them in. But I need to wait a couple hours to make sure all of this thoroughly drains out. You see that? So that I won't have uh, unnecessary water at the bottom of the little mini greenhouse. And I just make it out of a tote. A little inexpensive tote that I get from Walmart. In my haste to get everything done off of my to-do list, I almost forgot to pot up this one. It is called a lemon button fern. And again, I'm watering it from the bottom. It's almost finished draining. And then I found the tag in the potting soil to this really cute little plant. And I'm going to hold it up. It is called a exotic angel. And you can look at the beautiful uh, leaves. Kind of reminds you of angel wings a few okay. hours since my new baby plants have drained after I you know put them in larger pots as you can see here I've lined the bottom of this large tote I think it's 64 quarts 66 quarts and I put the little bamboo sticks right here and you can see it's getting a lot of sun from the window, but just in case we have cloudy days, I have grow lights to supplement the light. And I put these bamboo sticks here just so that I can set the top on it. It'll get plenty of air through here and the sun should keep them uh, with enough energy to create photosynthesis, as well as this little mini greenhouse would keep them very humid. And there's a humidifier over there. And then I have one right over here, and I have another one on the other side of the room. Some plants, because they're tropical, need more humidity than others. And this is a simple thing that you can do to provide them with that humidity. Here's one of my San Marzano tomato plants I was going to grow in this uh, container here, this food grade container, using the cracky method. I explained to you in my introduction how I'm taking over that garden again. <laughs> I've been forced to. <laughs> anyway, I didn't see the sense in growing it inside. I'm going to go ahead and pop this up into soil. That's my fan in the background. I'm sorry about the noise, but it's a little humid in here. The first thing I did was I snipped some little drainage holes at the bottom edge of this cup. And then I filled it up with inside potting soil. Well, not all the way up. And I'm gonna make a real deep hole. And I'm going to remove the tomato from the plastic basket. And I'm going to keep the sponge intact, and then I'm going to put it inside the hole. You can see that I pushed it through. 
and I can reuse that basket. And I'm gonna make that hole as deep as I can. And I'm gonna press the sponge, cause it's just made out of peat moss and it's biodegradable. And you saw the roots were growing through that sponge. And now I'm gonna fill it all the way up to the top because tomatoes have fibrous roots. See that little fuzziness? I'm gonna go in closer. See if you can see all that little fuzziness. All of that fuzz along this stem has the ability to develop strong roots. So I'm gonna fill this cup up all the way to the top. What it looks like. And please note this. If you want to know anything about transplanting seedlings, starting your gardens from seeds without hydroponics, please check my playlist for seed starting and transplanting. And I want to tell you that when I do put this outside in some soil in a large container, I'm going to bury this stem up to about right here. I want to make sure that the Branches are not touching the soil, but I will cover that with soil all the way down. So I'm gonna dig a deep hole and I'll show you when I do it. Have you ever ordered a uh, package of seeds and then you get a little odd seed in the package? I ordered Tiny Tim's and Red Robin tomato. Then these both would be dwarf. This is not a dwarf tomato. I've uh, removed some of the bottom limbs. I was just growing it just to see what's going to happen. But today, I decided I'll grow it outside. So I'm going to transplant it, sponge and all, into some potty mix. And um, keep it under grow light and then take it outside in a few weeks. Okay, guys, I'm at Lowe's at the garden center. And I found a few plants, nothing reasonable. But it is what it is, and I'll share them with you in a minute. I purchased some marigolds. They were on sale for $1.78. And you guys know I am used to planting a whole lot of these. And then I bought some hybrid uh, tomatoes, something that I don't normally grow, but are supposed to be heat tolerant. Now I'm at Callaway's Nursery. It's my favorite nursery. I'm going to go inside and see if they have anything on sale. Ideally, I would like to find some sweet pepper plants on sale. They have Chef Jeff's vegetables for $3.99. That's not a good price. And they really don't look that good. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get three of them. I'm going to get a red beauty a Valencia orange and a Hungarian hot wax. And then I'll start some more seeds. I'm going to put three marigolds. Uh, they're a nice size uh, French marigolds. I'm going to put three of them in this bed and probably two over here and one maybe in that bed because it's pretty full with the uh, curly mustards. I put the rest of the plants in this big 66 gallon tote to uh, be protected somewhat. It's like a little uh, frosting on the tote so it'll protect it from the sun. However, they were all outside, but some of them were in the shade. But I wanted to keep the opening because I don't have any holes in here yet, just in case the weather drops. And I'll put another brick up here and that should secure this until I come out in the morning. It is very obvious that these plants have been started uh, months and months ago because they're root bound so I'm just breaking up the root a little bit and they will continue to grow I've been doing this for years guys marigolds are one of the plants that are not feeble you can move them all around from bed to bed and they will still continue to grow so I dug a little hole I'm gonna go in a little bit deeper and I tried to choose where I didn't see a lot of mustard greens growing we're gonna push that down because we don't want to have root rot. And then I'm just gonna cover it all up and press it down. And I think I'm gonna put another one. It will just be a lot of them real close. But that's okay. As long as they get the job done, the pungent smell repels insects. So I'll go get another one. 
right here. And let's see if we can coax it out. And you can see the roots at the bottom. And I'm not worried about any uh, mustard green seedlings that I'm moving around or damaging because, like I said, <laughs> I've got a lot to thin out. So I'm going to break that root up a little bit right in here. This one is not as tight as the previous one. I think I'm going to go a little bit further down. Let's get that in there real good. That's a little bit too much. Soil removed is a little too deep. There we go. Then I'm going to cover it up. So I think that's all I'm going to put in this bed. Yep. Now I'm going to work over here close by the door. And I think I have three, four more plants left. I put two marigolds, one in each pot. And you can see the door here. And I did the same thing on this side. One in each pot. And I see some weeds or whatever that is. I'm going to pull that up tomorrow. I think I'm going to call it a day. I'll start back Wednesday morning. I had to come back downstairs to cover up my little mini greenhouse, but I'm glad it was raining and it's, it wasn't raining a lot, but any little bit of help when you start and see. So this is a good thing. Good morning, everybody. It's March 6th and I wanted to show you the, what is the? What the is zinnia the, seeds. The zinnia seeds that have germinated. And when did we plant them? Sunday. Yes. And today is what? March 6th. On a Wednesday? Yes. Okay, so they germinated really fast. I've never grown zinnias hydroponically. These will go outside to the outside garden. <laughs> Bye. All right, have a good day at school. Thank you. I just showed you these zinnias yesterday. And for my new gardeners, I'm only doing this to encourage you. Look how fast they are growing. And let me just show you something. I'm going to pull one out. Look at that root all the way at the bottom. And these were just planted a few days ago. So these will be easy for me to transplant outside as well. Guys, here are some zinnias that I started in indoor potty mix on the same day. I can't tell you what type of zinnias they are because I just put assorted on this little food container and I started them you know just to have some backup in case the ones uh, in the hydroponic system don't do what I need them to do grow vigorously I'll have some backups so this is really cool here are the zinnias that I showed you guys that I uh, put into this food saver container and I put them under the light as soon as I saw a few pieces of green. And I just want to show you what a difference a day makes. As soon as you see something popping through, put them under the light. When I see two sets of leaves on these zinnias, I'm going to carefully prick them out and plant them outside. Because they won't be that long uh, in growing that I need to harden them off. Bria or I, which it probably was Bria, put one, two, three, four, five, look like five basil seeds in this uh, hydroponic basket. I'm going to pop them up in soil. I'll be back. So I cut it open, as you can see here, and the roots are real tangled. Brian is filming me. I'm going to try to separate some. If I lose a couple, it's okay. So there's one. And I think I can get a couple more. I'm trying to be gentle with this by breaking them apart gently. Trying to get the sponge off of it, even though it won't matter. So that's two, three, four, five. I have them potted up and I'm going to move these outside very soon so that I won't have to harden them all. Here is an opal basil that I started in the hydroponic system and I just put the sponge into this potty mix. You can see the outline of the sponge right there and it's biodegradable. It'll break down and just give, let me give you a little pearl from Lady Cheryl. Opal basil is very slow to grow 
in your hydroponic systems. But once they take off, they do very well. So you can see this is the opal basil with a third set of leaves on it. So I think it will transition really nice into this potty mix. Here is a, a mustard spinach seedling that once again, I was growing hydroponically. I'm going to try to push it out. I'll, and it has some long roots on it and I'm gonna put it in potty mix and I'll be right back. Most of the roots are intact. So it should transition well. I see that I have some blue morning glories that I uh, put into these pods uh, two days ago, March the 4th, and they're up. So I'm taking the domes off of these. These are also going outside. I have three more morning glories in this system up. I take the domes off and you know what I do. Let them grow. It's Thursday morning. I just want to show you guys how fast those blue morning glories are taking off. They're just growing really fast. And I moved the ones that were over into this system over here so I can group them all together. Isn't that neat? I love morning glories. It's been raining on and off. Not any heavy rain, but a little bit. And uh, so I'm glad I came out to check on uh, my little mini greenhouse. I'm removing the cover off of it because you can see the, all the condensation that was building up. All of these containers, of course, they're nursery containers. They have holes in the bottom. If it rains during the night, they will just drain and I'll come out first thing in the morning and, and get them out of there. Uh, I see some of the marigolds are beginning to come up in the two stackable planters. Each one of them have one or two marigolds. They popping up. They're, they're gonna be fine. So that's gonna go all around the garden. These are the ones that I did yesterday. I transplanted them, looking good. Even have more Swiss yard coming up. We have strawberries here. And let's see, did we get anything to come up over here yet? I don't see anything in these planters. I have a lot more of these Peter baskets over here. And we're going to have flowers growing in them as well. Guys, I was headed back in the house and it's just so beautiful out here. I think I'm just going to follow my gut instinct and go ahead and get these transplants in some soil. The best time to transplant your starts into soil outside is when you have an overcast. And that way they won't burn up. These were already outside when I purchased them. So I'm confident they're going to be okay. Have you ever been filming content creators and, and then you look down and you didn't even press the start? to film i just shared how i put these celebrity tomatoes in here and the rule is you should have at least a five gallon container for one tomato plant so since this is 25 gallons i'm putting three in here that'll give me 10 more gallons to spare for me to put my basil and marigolds all around here uh they will uh, repel uh non-beneficial insects and then they will attract butterflies and everything like that, that that would pollinate. So I'm gonna put three tomato cages around here. I also, when I was filming before I realized I wasn't filming, I pinched off all of the bottom leaves. I'll show you again when I, okay, what is this? That's one I missed. You see that, see that leaf? Just pinch it off or prune it off and just make sure that nothing is touching the soil. Now, if you're wondering where I learned this from, there wasn't no YouTube university, it wasn't the internet. I learned this when I was eight years old, helping my grandparents. I'm not doing anything that I haven't done before. I am using a method that I know that works. Now, let me share this with you. If I was planting at the old place, the house I sold in the food forest, and I had these huge garden beds, I would lay that tomato plant. Let's pretend this is the plant. I would lay that tomato plant on the side and bury it real deeply like that and then bend it up. And if you go back and look at my old videos, you'll see 
That's how I buried them. Because I, you know, want to put more tomatoes in the uh, containers or the garden beds. So over here, I'm gonna put one celebrity tomato. I gotta chop this up and get it all smoothed out. I'll just put one tomato over here and a whole lot of basil. And then I have, I think, three more plants over there. I'm gonna plant maybe one here and two in here. I'll be back. I'm tilting this planter so that you can see how I planted the tomato, the celebrity tomato. And I'm going to pinch off the bottom leaves. And this is what I was doing before and wasn't videotaping. And so I'm just going to take all of this off. And if you're wondering why I don't have on gloves, trust me, I have a lot of them. I like to feel the dirt on my fingers. <laughs> brings back childhood memories of playing in sand and mud. Okay, so I smoothed that down. Nothing is touching the soil. And now I'm getting ready to plant Parks Whopper improve its hybrid as well. I'm not gonna try to save any of these seeds that, of the tomatoes that I'm growing. Going forward, I'll start my uh, tomato seeds and pepper seeds in January inside my hydroponic systems. So I'm gonna break up this soil here, plant this real, it's supposed to be a super whopper, and you can look at the stem of the plant and, and tell that it's gonna live up to its name. And I'm gonna remove all of these leaves right here, these branches. And I'm gonna plant this tomato to about right here, maybe here. I removed some of the soil. I broke it all up. I planted this big Parks Whopper Improved Hybrid Tomato right here in the center. I'll put some flowers all, all around the circle and again, more basil. If you're new to gardening, this is a indeterminate tomato plant. And the celebrities, they are determinate. So let me let's distinguish between the two. A determinate tomato plant will produce all of the tomatoes between two, three, four week period. They'll start ripening all at the same time, right? Indeterminate tomatoes, they can produce all through the growing season. So for here in North Texas, Garden Zone 8A, it starts to get really hot around the second week of June. And meaning that the temperatures can be as high as 100 degrees. Tomatoes won't flower in 100 degree temperatures. Now you can shade them, you can try to put a fan on them, you could clone some branches, put them in the shade, and then, uh, or keep constantly covering them up and then let them start producing again when the weather is more favorable. I don't, I think it's a waste of time. That's just me, because I've done it so much. I just start more seeds for my fall tomatoes. Now, I have two more plants I'm going to transplant into this big 25-gallon container, and they are the Super Sweet 100s. Those are the tomatoes that are Bria and her mother's favorite, so that's why I got two of them, and there's plenty of room because even those tomatoes only need five gallons of soil, so I have plenty soil left that I can grow something else. Hi everybody, it's me, Bria, and I just came back home from school, and I can't believe the work my grandmother has done. All right, let me show you. She planted pepper plants in each one of these containers, and she put a cage on them because we know they're going to grow big, tall, and strong. She planted another pepper plant right over here. I can't believe she planted all of this. She planted seven tomato plants, and she put cages on them also. Well, I hope there was something in this video that you can use in your gardening, but I want you to know before I started sowing seeds outside, before I started looking for starter plants to transplant, I thoroughly checked the weather report. I checked the Texas weather, and I also checked the National Weather Service, as well as the Farmers Almanac Com. And I found out that our last expected frost date was March 21st. However, they don't expect us to get any freezing temperatures until the early winter or late fall. So I just want you to know that I thank you again for watching. You know that I love you and God loves you too. Bye now.